Welcome to part four of the dress up tutorial. Um, we're going to get a little bit fancier in this tutorial and show you some animations, ways, different ways of doing things uh, to respond to your mouse, for example. So for the first thing, let's look at the mouse over um, possibil possibility. Right. So the first thing I did here from the last thing, from the last uh, sketch, the last part we left it, is I went ahead and um, move the lines to the forefront, the foreground, so I'm drawing them last. So then I'll be drawn over the panels, and then we can see, look at it. There you go, so the lines are the most prominent. In fact, maybe it'd be best to just comment out the panels. So let's go ahead and do that. So I will comment those out. And even the text. So we can focus on the lines there. Okay, now um, we're going to use a function or method called mouse moved. And basically, uh, just a quick review over scope. Remember in processing, uh, the curly brackets there designate scope of this. So all of this thing belongs to draw, and everything outside of it does not belong to draw. Now, if you have things such as these variables and such that are not in any brackets at all, then it belongs to sort of the root level of the sketch. So therefore, uh, for example, these variables are available to the entire sketch, even the stuff in brackets. However, if I put something inside the brackets, as a declare a variable, for example, it's not, um, it's not available to anything, any, any, any of the functions outside the brackets. Okay. Um, so now uh, this function, mouse moved, has its own scope. So if I start with void, mouse, and this is a built-in function in processing, okay, and we need the two parentheses. Uh, there are no arguments, but we do need to have the parentheses. And then curly bracket open, curly bracket closed. And basically what this means is that every time I move the mouse, the way this function works is that every time I move the, move the mouse, it'll run all the code within these two curly brackets and it'll do it in order, just like it does for draw. So everything in draw is being run once per frame. Here it's being run every time I move the mouse. So it's sort of a different schedule. So the mouse moved in some ways is a different scheduler. Okay, so it's not running on the, the draw frame rate, but actually on the mouse moved. Now one of the things I'm gonna, well, We'll get to that later. So basically, um, what we can do is we can have a, we can draw, say, a rectangle. Let me just demonstrate this. So if I do make a rectangle, let's say no stroke. And then if I do, um, oh, well, let's be fancy. So let's do no stroke, and we'll do fill, and we'll call it mint, since I already defined that up there. And then we'll draw an ellipse, okay, or circle. And remember, it's x, y, width, and then height. So we'll draw an ellipse that actually follows our mouse. So oh, here's another thing. And this is covered in some of the other materials, so uh, I won't go into in too much in depth. But that you can also do this ellipse mode. And we're going to call that center. That just means that your coordinates will be from the center. So my x, y now would be the center of the ellipse, whereas usually the default is what's called corner. And in fact, the x, y then is the corner of the circle or the corner of the bounding square around the circle. So this way it'll be the center and we'll call it mouse x will be the x coordinate and mouse y will be the y coordinate. And then width and height, we'll just make it say about 50, something like that. Okay. So now technically every time I move the mouse, it should draw a circle where my mouse pointer is. So I run that, okay, and as you see, it does. Well, that's kind of interesting. Now there's a problem here. As you see, I'm basically creating this little sort of glow worm, which is nice, but not might not be exactly what I need for my score. So one thing we, we need to do for draw is to have a background. And again, this is something that's been covered in the basics, some of your reading materials. Uh, but I'll explain it briefly here. Since now we're starting in on some animation, 
we need a background. And basically, the background is it draws basically a big rectangle once per frame. And that's going to be in the very back. Well, because I put background here, it's going to be in the very back. And it basically sort of erases everything once per frame so that you can have animation. So we went ahead and do that. One thing that happens is my thing turns black. And you notice now. So basically, every time I move my mouse, it draws this ellipse. But then the frame, the draw, the background it draw, draws a big black rectangle over everything. Okay, And these pers the lines persist here because uh, they're being drawn after the background. They're being drawn on top of the background. Okay, So we need that. So that's kind of handy. Mouse moved. Now, that's all nice and good. But maybe instead, to make this very useful for our score, we will have a mouse over. All right. So what we need to do is we need to have these coordinates here. So basically what I want is every time it mouses over one of the lines, uh, something happens to the line, a mouse over type of behavior. All right. And this is a, a two step process. So let's just, uh, let's just work on the first line here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm, and you can do a number of different things. You can change the color of the line, for example. So every time I mouse over one of the lines, which represents a pitch, the color of the line changes perhaps. Another possibility is that you put a stroke around it. So where it's, you know, it has, I'm sorry, th these are lines. Never mind. You need a rectangle for that. Uh, another thing you can do is change the width of the line, for example. You can make it a little bit fatter. So let me try that. So let me deal with the stroke weight. Okay. So basically, I'm going to deal with the first line here. And this is where variables come in handy. Now, stroke weight is SWT1. Okay, and we see that is equal to 4. Okay, but in fact, it could be equal to anything. And the nice thing is about variables is you can change that variable at some point in time within your sketch or assign it to something. So I'm going to assign it to mouse moved. Okay, so every time I move my mouse, for example, I can say that SWT1, that variable, is not equal to 4, but in fact is equal to, say, 10. All right? So if I do that, every time I move it, it changes to 10. All right. Now I want to be a little bit more specific. I only want it to change to 10 if, ah, uh, see, okay, let's, let's make this 2. Let's just deal with the one line. So we'll make this 2, we'll make this 1. I only want it to change to 10 when I'm over the line. All right. So how do I do that? I'm going to use an if statement. And I'm going to say if. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to look at the mouse y value, right? Because we want basically the lines are going all the way across the screen, so we want the mouse to be equivalent to the mouse y of the line. So if mouse y. Okay. Is equal to. So now uh, we're going to have to use this ass assignment of this operator equal equal. That means is as is the same as, whereas the single equal sign means it's assigned to. So this SW3 variable name is assigned to the number three. In this case, is equal to or is the same as. So if mouse y, the coordinate of mouse y, remember the coordinate mouse y is a built-in variable. It's a, a reserved name. So it this word mouse y can't be used for anything else, and it will always store the current mouse y value, all right? So it can use it just like any number. It's an integer. So if that integer, if that number, which is the value of the mouse y coordinate, is in fact equal to the, the value of the y coordinate of this line, which is this right here. Remember, line is x1, y1, and x2, y2. And in this case, since we have a vert, uh, horizontal line going all the way across, y1 and y2 are exactly the same because it's a straight line. So we're going to grab that figure there. So if the mouse y is equal to that, okay, and that's going to close, and we're going to create a scope here for our if statement. Open curly, and then uh, reverse curly there. So now if my mouse is moved first, and if my mouse is moved, it's going to look at this if statement. And if the mouse y is equal to this, then it's going to change that 
line thickness, this SW1, which is the stroke weight here, 210. Okay, and just so we can see the contrast, let's make SW1 1 for now. And we'll see that. Okay, oh, it's actually black, sorry. We have to change the color of that as well. All right, let's see, stroke, get rid of that. And we'll make this just white for now. Okay, so we see that. And if I go here, there, it changes thickness. Ah, but there's a problem because it doesn't change back. All right, so there's another thing you can use, and that's called else, E-L-S-E. -E. Okay, and it's the same basic thing except you don't need now to have this comparison, right? Because it's just going to, else basically means if this is not true. So if this is true, then this is going to happen. Otherwise, if it's not true, then this is going to happen. So you just need to create a scope, curly brackets, curly brackets. And then we'll make that back to one. So if you are touching the line, it'll be 10. And if you're not touching the line, then it'll be one. Okay, so there. Uh, you gotta get right on it. There you go. Okay. All right, so you, you notice that we have to actually be right on the line. So let's give it a little bit uh, scope. All right, so if we say, Let's give it just a little bit of, um, uh, you know, a, a little region with, within which, you know, we can touch it and it'll grow. It'll be a mouse over. Uh, and you can just sort of experiment with this. So in order to do this, wh why don't I, uh, yeah, so in order to do this, we're going to have um, a greater than and less than, okay? So why don't we make it about something like six pixels or something like that? Okay, so if mouse Y, and remember mouse Y starts at zero there at the top, and then goes adds 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 down to the bottom, okay, to the to the to the height of the sketch. So if we say mouse Y needs to be greater than, and that'll set the top limit, you know, the, the upper limit of of our range. So this is the this is the center there, top comparison, okay. And then we'll say minus, say, three pixels, because we want the total to be six pixels, sorry, three pixels, all right? So if mouse is y is greater than that, so that means the line minus three, so three pixels above the line. And then we're going to use this operator and, and that, that basically is a logical comparison. It basically says that uh, now your if statement has to satisfy both of these rules, right? So then, and mouse y is less than in this case because we're going to set the bottom limit is less than, and then just just copy this over. This is the center of the line. And remember to go down, you have to add, or it's increasing in value plus three. Then it's going to do that. Okay. So let me just go over that really quick just to review. So basically we've changed the mouse y is equal to because we really had to be right on the center of the line. Exactly. So in this case now, we can say that we can set a, a range. So it can be kind of near the line. So we're saying that basically mouse y is going to be greater than uh, the center of the line minus three, so above, three pixels above the center of the line. And so it has to satisfy both and the mouse Y has to be less than or uh, three pixels below. So that's the center of the line plus three pixels. Okay, so let's give that a try. And there, so it's a little bit easier there. Have a mouse over there. Okay. There. And then you can set the range for whatever you want. So if you, if you find that's even too, that's too blunt or that's still too narrow, you just change this to a different number. And in fact, you can make that a variable if you want. So why don't we try that with an int and we'll call this, um, 
we'll call this a uh, mouse accuracy mouse accuracy or something something of the sort and we'll say equals three or four or whatever you want so now we can use this as our variable here instead of three we can use mouse accuracy and then if we you know for, if we want to repeat this for each line then then we need to uh, then it'll be easy we can just update everything at the same time okay uh, now oh of course other things you can do for example is you can change maybe the thickness to be um, to correspond to uh, the X right so basically if you want to put a if statement within this you can do that as well so let's just do that real quick just so you can see um, so remember the scope here is there it's there to there so everything if this condition is true then it's gonna run everything within it so you can put another if statement within that as well so let's do a let's do just quickly for demonstration sake let's do a mouse X okay and is less than 500 and that's the top band there we're going to make the this and we'll cut that out of there we'll make that equal to say three for example okay and then now you can use this other thing called else if so just as in this case else means that it has to satisfy this condition if it doesn't satisfy this condition then this happens right you can also say else if which means that oops um, right I think it just this I think it's still this but the syntax coloration doesn't work for that one let's give command T a try no okay that's okay so you can say else if and 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 give a condition so you can say first if it, it's like this else if it's like this right so if it's in this case greater is greater than 500 and we'll just greater than or equal to just so we don't mess up if we have it exactly at 500 500 we're going to create a scope there as well oops sorry I already gave you my bracket I just didn't see it there and uh, we're going to say SWT1 equals, say, 6, or maybe 8, something like that. Okay, let's give that a try. Oops. So what did I do? Unexpected token. Uh, ah, I think the syntax is else if. Ah, with a space. Okay, so... Yeah, just good to remember that. Else if with a space. And let's run that. Oops. There's that. There's that. There's that. There's that. And there's that. Okay, and that often happens, so it's it's worth worthwhile keeping track of your curly brackets. Sometimes I'll even comment them. I mean, it might, it might be excessive to comment every single one, but um, you might want to comment, you know. And mouse y if or something to the to the effect that helps you all right so let's go ahead and run that now there that oops okay and there that all right all right okay i see what i did wrong all right, so basically you want this else to respond to this if. So let's find out what the scope of that is. And then if, and then else. Okay, so now that's actually a good instructive, my mistake. So basically this if business and else if business is within this whole if, right? So the scope there goes if there. 
So this happens within this. So basically the computer is going to look at this. If this is true, it's going to run everything inside this. Okay. And if it's not true, it's going to run that. All right. So let's take the example of this not being true, meaning I'm not anywhere near the line, uh, four pixels up or four pixels below the, the line I want to, in question. And uh, we, so if, if it's not true, if I'm nowhere near this line, then it's going to be one, right? And it's just going to completely ignore all the code inside there. Now, if I am near this line within these, these, um, these coordinates, then it's, then it's going to ask me, well, then how about my mouse X? Is it less than 500? Meaning, is it somewhere in here? Okay, well, it is. If it is, then it's going to change that to three. If it's not, then it's going to go to this if. Well, is it greater than or equal to the 500? And if that's true, it's going to change that to that. But if this is not true, then it's just going to um, do nothing. All right? So if this is not true and this is not true, it'll just continue on like nothing's happened. So let's make sure that works. Okay, there, and then there, there you go. So you can actually have a mouse over that tells you your dynamic level as well. And of course you can change the color instead of the thickness or anything else you want. But basically this shows you the, the basic mechanism of how to use if statements and how to use the mouse move function. Okay, so it's worth looking. Let me just, uh, oops. Uh, it's worth looking. There's a mouse tutorial document, but it's also worth looking at all these other ones too. You can do it mouse clicked, mouse moved, mouse dragged. It can be various things with your mouse, and you can connect various actions to your mouse movements.